As the world celebrates the World Mental Health Day with a team, make mental health and well-being for all a global priority, which is to provide us with an opportunity to rekindle our efforts to make the world a better place. It has become imperative that there is no better time to talk about the issue of mental health than now. Mental health has been found to be essential to our overall well-being and as important as our physical health. When we feel mentally well, we can work productively, enjoy our free time, and contribute actively to our community. Walking into the premises of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, one of the foremost neuropsychiatric hospitals in Nigeria, comes with different waves of emotion. For some, relief at having found a solution to their problem. For others, shame, guilt, and lots of other feelings too numerous to mention. The word psychiatric holds numerous meanings to a whole lot of people. There are lots of street names such as weary, alagono, Oshinwin and other things like that that is being used to describe people who are mentally challenged. Quite a lot of people are not aware of what mental health is. And so we took a trip to the office of the medical director of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Yaba Lagos, Dr. Olubenga Adekileowe, who shared with us on what mental health is as well as the reason of why we have to make mental health a global priority. What is mental health? Again, according to the World Health Organization, mental health is a state of psychological well-being in which an individual is able to carry out the following four roles. Okay? One, the person must be able to realize his or her own potential in life. Two, it must be able to cope with everyday normal stresses of life. And number three is that he must be able to work productively. And not that alone, he must be able to contribute and participate meaningfully in his or her own community. If all these things are in place, we say an individual is mentally sound. All right? Now, the question is, when do we say someone is mentally sick? We say somebody is mentally sick when the person has psychological disturbances. Okay? Other disturbances in the thinking, in the emotion, in the memory, even in behaviors that is so severe enough to cause pain to this individual or those around him. And there is also the third part of it, and that is impairment in social and occupational functioning. When all these things occur in an individual, we say the person is mentally ill. And uh, whether we like it or not, when you look at mental illness generally, it affects one, at least one out of four people. That is about 25% of any given population who have one recognizable mental illness or the other. So to understand the determinants of mental health illness and as well as the protective and the risk factor, we took a trip to the office of the head of the Department of Psychology, Dr. Francis Omotayo Ajiro Tutu, who will shed light on this for us. So there are multiple factors which are individual and general, which entail social and structural determinants that may combine to protect and undermine our mental health and shift our position on the mental health continuum. Furthermore, an individual's psychological and biological deficiencies, such as inadequate emotional skills, substance use, and genetic related issues, can make people more vulnerable to develop mental health problems. Exposure to unfavorable social, economic, and geopolitical 
and environmental circumstances also can increase people's risk of experiencing mental health conditions. So mental health risk and protective factors can be found in our society at different scales, which affect individuals, family and communities, such as economic downturn, disease outbreak, humanitarian emergencies, and forced displacement, which we are seeing globally, and even taking it down to Nigeria, where we live. And this affects um, the growing of the society generally. Okay, risk factors can manifest themselves at all stages of life, but those that occur during developmental sensitive periods, especially early childhood, are particularly detrimental. For example, harsh parenting, child abuse and physical punishment are known to undermine a child's mental health. And bullying, which is a major factor, it's a leading risk factor for mental health condition. Protective factors occur throughout our lives and um, serve to strengthen resilience. They include our individual social and emotional skills, our attributes as well as positive social interaction, quality of education, decent work, then also safe neighborhood. These are germane issues which would foster good mental health. So we took a trip to the office of Dr. Oluwani, who told us so much about mental health promotion and prevention. Um, mental health promotion and prevention. Generally, health promotion is the process of enabling people to take greater control of their health and their determinants with the aim of improving their health. That is what health promotion is generally. Mental health promotion focuses on optimizing um, positive mental health and by looking at determinants that can improve the positive mental health of individuals. And this determinant is not um, only restricted to personal factors. There are societal, socioeconomic factors and environmental factors. In fact, some of them are not directly within the health sector's domain but they are very important. There are two components to mental health promotion, mental health education, and public policies. This is what mental health promotion is all about. If you look at the mental health education aspect of it, we could be at individual level, so you are creating awareness um, among individuals about behaviors, about their lifestyles, about coping mechanisms. At the level of the society. Um, mental health education is about advocacy for policies that will support good mental health of the population. This mental health promotion activities could be school-based, it could be work-based, and it could be at the community level. So there are issues um, that we may take with puppies and students in school that right from the tender age we increase their knowledge about mental health. Workplace issues are very important because we spend a greater percentage of our lives in the workplace. And if we don't take this place very seriously, there could be stressor coming from the workplace. So mental health promotion also tend to look into this um, area. If we are going to achieve um, mental health and well-being for all, if we are going to make it a priority, then we need to focus on the issue of mental health promotion and mental health prevention. We also spoke with some of the mental health team who told us some of the challenges as well as solutions to making mental health a global priority in Nigeria. Talking about the challenges facing assessing uh, mental health services, particularly in Nigeria, one of the biggest challenges is awareness and uh, inadequate uh, knowledge. This can be seen at the policy making level and uh, we see that policies are made and uh, not too much in favor of mental health services. We also discover that uh, the information is not so much getting to them. You can imagine an issue that has been in exchange for uh, since 1907, somebody will not know is there. And some people also think about uh, mental challenge as uh, having a spiritual cause. As such, they would not want to seek uh, modern uh, 
service to solve their problem. So with solving this problem has to start with the policy making level. Policies are to be made to suit and to favor uh, mental health services that will also affect uh, uh, budgeting, you know, budgeting for it so that they'll be able to cater for things that are needed to make people assess the services. Another area that a uh, solution can come from is to make uh, mental health services all inclusive at the federal level, at the state level, at the local government level. We can uh, make use of the print, we can make use of electronic, we can make use of social media, we can make use of local people making information available to people in the marketplace, religious centers, and uh, places where many people gather. Assessing different pathways to care for psychiatric patients. Only a limited proportion of patients with psychiatric disorder attends a formal healthcare facility, and that too when the condition becomes severe. Mostly, the first point of contact for psychiatric patients is usually the faith, um, faith healers. Also, the traditional um, healers too are not left out. Treatment from these unqualified medical practitioners and faith and traditional um, um, healers is a common practice and is attributable to the delay in proper treatment of these patients. A large number of um, psychiatric patients do not attend a health facility due to lack of awareness about the treatment services. The distance to the hospital is also one of the major challenges. You find out that with the distance this patient might be coming from, might be very, very, might be very, very far. In fact, that alone is even a stressor for the patient who is already distressed. It's also, some of the challenges too we, uh, we also face are uh, superstitions associated with mental disorder, such as believing that um, the, the illness is spiritual, is an attack, you know, and all that, you know. So this has also posed to be one of the challenges associated with mental illness. Possible solutions to most of these issues being identified has to do with creating more, uh, um, having more mental health facility across the country that will help take care of um, the increasing number of uh, mental health patients we keep seeing which, which keep increasing on a daily basis. That alone uh, uh, would also help, you know, um, both at the federal level, the state level, and, uh, and even the local, uh, uh, the rural areas, you know, to actually take care of individuals with this condition. Continuous um, awareness on mental health related issues, just like we are doing in Yaba Voice, will also help educate the populace on the uh, uh, on mental health issues um, as such we can actually educate the populace on even the basic symptoms of uh, uh, mental basic symptoms the signs and symptoms of mental illness stigma is a st strong barrier to assessing mental health services especially in nigeria and efforts need to be made in order to overcome ignorance and discrimination against people living with mental illness. Like there's no family that want to associate with this person. And even these family members, people keep pointing hands at them, saying, look at it, look at them, their family of a mad person. Others which affect the quality of life of both our patients and also those family members, which are also the caregivers of these people. It is therefore imperative for people to be educated on mental health illness, thereby knowing what it entails and psychoeducating them on the need to avoid using all this kind of critical comments that make the service seems to be low. If this is properly done, a kind of community awareness is also needed. This will boost our patients' morale, the quality of life will be increased, and likewise, the quality of life of the caregivers will also improve. The World Health Organization states that mental health is more than just the absence of mental disorder 
all these abilities. Peak mental health is not only about managing active conditions, but also looking after ongoing wellness and happiness. It also emphasizes that preserving and restoring mental health is crucial individually and at a community and social level. However, many aspects of mental health had been challenged and already had been jeopardized before the pandemic in 2019. An estimate of one in eight were living with mental disorder before the pandemic, but now it has gradually reduced to one in four. At the same time, the services, skills, and funding available for mental health remains in short supply in low and middle income countries. A visit to the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, to look at what are they doing in terms of making mental health and emotional well-being a global priority. Yes, the MD, Dr. Owe, will be telling us more on what they are doing. Thank you very much. At Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, Lagos, we have teams of experts in various units. Number two, to contribute and making I mean, to make mental health a global priority, we are involved in training and the training of manpower in the area of mental health. For example, our center is a major trainer in the Colombo Universal Treatment Curriculum on drug abuse. So we treat drug abuse professionals, as you know, that this is a major problem now. Not that alone. The facilities available are also in very good shape. We have our own private wards. We have drug rehabilitation facility, which was just recently renovated by the ECOWAS, support from ECOWAS. Okay. We have intensive care units for our patients, if need be. We have standard laboratories, molecular laboratories. And all this are geared towards helping those who are mentalists uh, get the best from our services. In addition to that, we are also involved in promoting and preventing mental health of uh, the Nigerians. In the area of that, we have our own social media platform, the Yaba Voice, through which we reach to millions of people on the internet talking about mental health telling them creating awareness and educating them what to do when they notice minor mental ill health so these are some of the ways we'll be contributing to mental health from our own corner to the global effort in making it a priority the medical director of the federal neuropsychiatric hospital took us around to showcase their own response to the issue of mental health in Nigeria. The Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Yaba is poised and ready to deal with issues confronting mental health through the various facilities available in the institution. We have the electroconvulsive therapy unit, we have the sleep disorder clinic, we have the private wards as well as the open wards. We have different laboratories catering to various needs of patients that comes into the hospital. The drug ward that is used for treating and helping people who have addiction issues, housing different rehabilitation, equipment ranging from the occupational therapy to gym equipment and quite a whole lot of other facilities, as well as the child and adolescent unit of the hospital which is stationed at Oshodi, catering solely for the needs and mental needs of children. 
Dr. Egegbera also spoke with us on what can be done to improve the global mental health of individuals as well as the larger community. For this year's World Mental Health Day, well, I think that theme is very apt considering that you know people are coming to their awareness about how important mental health and mental well-being is. The World Health Organization rightly said that there is no health without mental health. And the fact is that the body and the mind work synergistically. The Making World Mental Health Day a day to celebrate mental health and well-being, and making it a global priority for all, will make people begin to pay attention to even the preventative measures that can be taken to cause, reduce the incidences of mental health disorders. That means looking at various age groups from the maternal mental health to the child and adolescent health to the mental health of the adults and the elderly people. There are steps to take to prevent even the occurrence of mental illnesses at different age groups. We also spoke with Dr. Ijaribe, who told us some of the things available at the Child and Adolescent Clinic. It's one of the multifaceted, multidisciplinary fields for child mental health in the country. And it's about the only one that, is, that has all the disciplines located inside the same building in the West African sub arena. It's located here in Oshodi, in Lagos State. And we have clientele coming in from all over the West African region, from Benin, from Sierra Leone, sometimes from Ghana. It's a center that serves children below the age of 18, but for special needs individuals, we see people as old as 35 years of age because of their mental age. This center has psychologists, it has psychiatric doctors in mental, child mental health, he has EEG machine facility, he has occupational therapists, he has speech therapists, he has pharmacists, he has everything that you need. He has neurodevelopmental physiotherapists on board. This has also improved the um, degree of care and the cost of care for many of the children. The center is very cheap to assess, very affordable for many of children because it's a government institution. Dr. Ojo also spoke with us on the facilities available for patients who come in for drug rehabilitation. We cannot talk about mental health without mentioning the use of psychoactive substance as a cause of mental health or mental illness in our environment. Here at Yaba Psychiatric Hospital, we have a unit for inpatient treatment of patients or, peop or people who have substance use disorders. We also have our patient treatment and we have outreach programs. We have been equipped with modern facilities, including vocational se a vocational center that has equipment for training of people with substance use disorders. We have recreational facilities. We have a mini gym where they undergo exercise and um, physiotherapy for many of our, some of, some of our patients. We also have rehabilitation programs for them in terms of community behavioral therapy to change the way they think so that they will stop using drugs. We also have a way of improving their motivation to stop using drugs and using motivational enhancement therapy to increase their motivation to stop using drugs. Our outpatient treatment facility is where we discharge our patient to after the completion of an um, inpatient program. And this outpatient program is a way of following them up and providing after care management for them so that they would not relapse. Relative prevention is a very important part of um, the rehabilitation program. We envision a world in which mental health is valued, 
promoted and protected where everyone has an equal opportunity to enjoy mental health and to exercise their human right and where everyone can assess the mental health care that they need. This is another opportunity to come together to recognize progress in this field and to be vocal about what we need to do to ensure the mental health and well-being becomes a global priority for all. Thank you.